When we write the electron configuration for an element, we are simply listing all of its electrons according to their quantum numbers for energy and shape. In order to do this, I added a supplemental periodic table here that arranges the periodic table according to its blocks where you can see the different shapes of electron orbitals. So you have the S, the D, the P, and the F. And you don't want to forget that helium is included in the S orbitals, but it definitely does belong in the noble gas group. And so we kind of shift it all the way over there on the periodic table. So we're going to jump right into an example and I'm going to zero in on neon right here. And I'm going to write the electron configuration. It looks like this. This is going to be neon in brackets. And before I get into the electron configuration, what I want to point out is that the periodic table will already tell us the number of electrons in the standard state or neutral state in this case for neon. And this is because atomic number, the atomic number 10 in this case, is equal to the number of protons, which correlates to the positive charge. If this is a neutral element, it has to have the same amount of electrons as it has protons in order to have an overall zero charge. Therefore, we also expect there to be 10 electrons in neon. In order to write the electron configuration, I'm going to start all the way at the beginning of the periodic table with hydrogen, and I'm going to list the quantum numbers for the electrons in each position of the periodic table until I get to neon. I'm going to start at the very top with the 1s, and I see that I'm writing 1s and 1, 2 electrons, and so I add that as the exponent. I'm going to drop down. I'm not to neon yet, so I'm going to write 2s right here, and then I see two 2s electrons, 2s2, jump all the way across the periodic table to the 2p, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, two P electrons. So two P six, and that is my electron configuration for neon. The next example is gonna be a little bit more challenging and I'm gonna jump down the periodic table over to chlorine. I'm gonna do this in two different ways. I'm gonna do the complete electron configuration and then I'm gonna show you the noble gas shorthand. But let's start with the just ordinary, write all the electrons out. I'm going to do just the same with neon. I'm going to start at the 1s. I've got two 1s electrons. I have two 2s electrons. I have six 2p electrons. Now I'm going to jump to a new row on the periodic table. This is the 3s. So I have two 3s electrons. And then I have one, two, three, four, five. 3p electrons. And so that is my complete electron configuration for chlorine. However, as chemists, we typically really, really care about the valence electrons. And therefore, I'm going to show you right here. These are what we call the core electrons. And hopefully what you see is that this configuration for the core electrons is the exact same thing as neon. And so if we were only concerned with the valence electrons, a nice and neater way of writing this is to just write that this is equal to neon or the last noble gas in our configuration. And I'm just going to write the valence electrons. and this is equal to chlorine. What this does is it saves us the time of writing out all the core electrons and only depicts the valence electrons along with the last noble gas configuration. As you might predict, this is just called the noble gas shorthand for electron configurations. The last example that we're gonna do is gonna be arsenic. Arsenic is 33 on the periodic table, we expect 33 electrons to be in it, in its neutral state. And so I'm going to quickly work through the core electrons and see if you can follow along. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. So those are the core electrons. Now let's work on the valence. We have 4s2, 
2, which we can see all the way over here, 4s. So we went through two electrons, but now we have the D block. And something special happens with the D where we would expect it to be 4D if it's going in sequence. However, the D, even though it's on the fourth row of the periodic table, is always going to start out at 3D. The reason why you start with 3D has to do with quantum mechanics and empirical energy observations. And so we're not going to worry about that just yet. But what we do want to see is that we're trying to get all the way over to arsenic. So we need to include all 10 of these 3D electrons before we get there. And so in our configuration, we're going to write 3D10. And then we're going to take care of those last three electrons from the 4P. So 4P3. And then we can, once again, we can make this a little bit simpler. I can take all of these electrons that are from the core. I'm just going to call those the core electrons. And then you have your outer electrons with the 4S, 3D, and the 4P. And so I'm going to find my last noble gas, which was argon. I'm just going to write out that the core electrons are just equal to the electron configuration of argon. And then I'm going to write my outer electrons right here. 4s2, 3d10, 4p3. And that is equal to the shorthand notation for arsenic.